sometimes it's the finishing touches that make all the difference. Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com and MakingWithMetal.com. In this video, we're gonna take the primary barrel work that we just completed in the last video and we're gonna put on the finishing touch, which is a custom thread protector. Now, you'll note that a couple videos back, I talked about preparing the barrel and one of the steps was to cut about an inch off of either end. Here's the trick. You take off the muzzle end section that you cut off and you make a custom thread protector out of that. Why? Because it's the right material and it's already pre-profiled. Let's go over to the lathe and see what we're gonna do. So here we are back at the Precision Matthews PM1440 GT lathe. This is the lathe we've been using for the series and I took the four jaw chuck that I've been using for the other barrel work videos, removed it and replaced it with this Pratt Bernard Atlas PB23 5C collet chuck. I like to use 5C collets when I can because they grip really well, they're really good for fragile parts, and they run really concentric and true. Finally, they're really quick to use. So we just need to find a 5C collet that's gonna closely match the OD of that cut down section of barrel that we're gonna use to make the thread protector. The first operation on the lathe is to face each side. We're gonna take multiple passes to remove imperfections and get the overall length of the thread protector close to its final value. Then I like to remove the bulk of the material from the center of the thread protector by using a drill in the tailstock. I'm gonna take three passes in this particular case because I like to work incrementally, use plenty of thread cutting oil, and also use a medium spindle speed. Then it's time to use a boring bar. We need a precise inside diameter. Now I just took a reference measurement from another thread protector I had and cut to that ID. Then you need to take a 5 8 by 24 tap. Now this is a common gunsmithing tap and is available through a variety of retailers. Install it in the tailstock and then cut the threads with the spindle under power. I used the minimum speed on my lathe which is 50 RPM and plenty of thread cutting oil once again. Reversing the spindle will bring the tap back out of the part being threaded. Now I'm gonna switch over to this custom mandrel that I built for working on threaded muzzle accessories. It's just basically the duplicate of a threaded muzzle profile with 5 8 by 24 threading. We don't need a hole or anything like that. And I've cut it down a little bit short so that we can reach inside our threaded muzzle accessory with a boring bar. We can face it down to size that kind of thing. It's just made from a section of one inch diameter cold rolled steel. So I have a one inch collet in the 5C collet chuck. We just tighten this into place and then we can go ahead and go to work. With the thread protector screwed onto the mandrel up next to the shoulder, it's time to face it down to size. We're just gonna take a measurement of the length of the tenon of the threaded muzzle on the rifle we want to use this thread protector with and face this thread protector down to that exact length. Then we go over to the milling machine and mill the wrench flats. I'm using the same mandrel with some milled off flat sections 180 degrees apart from each other and some parallels to set up each milling pass. And I've calculated this such that when I'm done milling, a three quarter inch wrench will fit perfectly on these flats. Then we take the same mandrel, hold it in a bench vise and file off the rough edges from milling. Then it's back over to the lathe where we crank up the spindle speed, use some fine paper with a little bit of cutting oil to put a final polish on the part. Next we check fit on the rifle. And in this case, it spins on nice. It doesn't rattle at all. It's a really good fit. Now, one final thing that you need to do is think about clocking it. If you want your wrench flats perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal and they're misaligned, when you get it up against the shoulder, there's some simple math. We're gonna put it back on the mandrel, take a few thousandths off or 10 thousandths off, whatever it is, to get it rotated just right. I'll have that in the accompanying blog post. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? And we got a lot more action coming up to round out this Remington 700 224 Valkyrie build. We're gonna be installing the Trigger Tech Special Trigger and the Bolt Stop. We're gonna be taking the barreled action and installing it in this KRG Bravo chassis stock. And then it's time to go to the range. So make sure you subscribe to Gavin Tube with notifications, click on that little bell. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy machining, happy shooting, and happy reloading.